subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 31st of December. Omicron dampens New Year celebrations in India. Tally crosses 1,200 mark. Pakistan's opposition rejects mini budget. Finance Minister dismisses inflation fears. Afghanistan's bitter winter adds to torment of millions. And now for all the details. India's Omicron cases tally surged to 1,270 on Friday, even as the authorities imposed tougher restrictions to curb the latest variant of the COVID-19 amid New Year celebrations. While night curfews have been imposed in all major cities, authorities were finding it difficult to limit crowding at hill stations and beaches as people rushed to ring in the new year with family and friends. India's Omicron cases tally surged to 1,270 on Friday with Western Maharashtra reporting the most number of infections of the new variant at 450, followed by 320 cases in capital New Delhi. Active COVID-19 cases in India stood at 91,361 on Friday as a total of 16,764 new infections were reported in the last 24 hours. Authorities in Maharashtra's capital Mumbai on Friday extended Section 144 till January 15 to curb crowds at public places and security was beefed up in the wake of virus and security-related concerns on New Year. While night curfews have been imposed in all major cities, authorities were, however, finding it difficult to limit crowding at beaches in western Goa as people rushed to ring in the new year with family and friends in complete party mode. The poor discipline related to COVID-19 protocols worried locals and authorities. People are comparatively less aware about the COVID restrictions. COVID-appropriate behavior must be there. And uh, I will suggest that uh, administration should uh, also uh, uh, emphasize about that awareness. While more than half of India's adult population is fully vaccinated, hundreds of millions are still at risk. Doctors warn that if an Omicron-fueled third wave of infections hits the country, medical facilities could be overrun very quickly. Heavy rainfall in India's southern Chennai city on Friday caused severe waterlogging and affected daily life of the residents who were left struggling to reach their destinations amid the chaos. Heavy rainfall in India's southern Chennai city caused severe waterlogging and affected daily life of the residents who were left struggling to reach the destinations amid the chaos. People had to wade through knee-high waterlogged roads as several areas were inundated. Vehicular movement was also affected as customers had to struggle through the waterlogged roads. Locals said they were facing many difficulties and were deprived of some basic necessary items and services. It's raining almost about eight to nine hours, and there is water logging, and it started around six six thirty, started rising, and it went up to half of thigh level. Look at the uh, water lugging here. For the last one month, I am suffering here like this. I am going office like this. I have no meal at my home. Every time this, this is like this for five days, seven days, it is like this only. Meanwhile, corridors and rooms of ESI hospital in the city were also waterlogged, depicting the severity of the situation. Machines were brought in at different places to pump out water from the waterlogged areas and ease movement of people. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition parties have rejected the finance supplementary bill tabled in the parliament and accused PM Imran Khan-led government of surrendering Pakistan's economic sovereignty. The bill, dubbed as mini-budget, plans to end exemptions on sales tax and levy new duties as part of fiscal tightening measures 
aimed at winning funding from the International Monetary Fund. Pakistan's Finance Minister Shokat Areen on Thursday presented the much-awaited Finance Bill 2021 in the Parliament amid protests by the opposition parties, which accused Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government of surrendering Pakistan's economic sovereignty through the anti-people legislation. Dubbed by the opposition parties as the mini-budget, the Finance Bill proposes to impose 17% tax on around 144 items to raise about Rs 343 billion. This bill is necessary to ensure the sixth review of the six billion US dollars extended fund facility by the IMF. Opposition, PMLN and PPP leaders said that the government's policies have broken the backs of the people amid rising inflation. IMF se le kar de, lekin Pakistan ke gareeb awam ka bhi to khayal rakhein, jiski hadiyon se bhi aapne jo hai, wo har chiz mein. Finance Minister Tareen have ever rejected the concern that the bill will unleash a new wave of inflation, saying that of the total additional taxes, the common man will only bear a burden of rupees two billion. तो 700 अरब रुपए की बात हो रही थी उसको निकाल के 343 बिलियन हुआ उसमें से कॉमन मैन पर 2 अरब रुपए अच्छा वो क्या चीजें हैं दिस कम्स एज सर्जिंग फूड एंड एनर्जी प्राइसेस हैव पुट पीएम इमरान खान अंडर इंक्रीजिंग प्रेशर इन रीसेंट मंथ्स एज हाउस होल्ड बिल्स हैव कॉज्ड ग्रोइंग एंगर अमंग द मिडिल क्लासेस व्हिच हैड प्रोवाइडेड हिज गवर्नमेंट्स मेन सपोर्ट बेस मूविंग ऑन at least four people were killed and 15 others wounded in a blast that took place in Pakistan's southwestern Quetta city on Thursday. Police said an investigation was underway while there was no immediate claim of responsibility till the last reports came in. At least four people were killed and 15 others wounded in a blast that took place at the gate of a college in Quetta city of Pakistan-controlled Balochistan province late on Thursday. Police said an improvised explosive device was planted under a pole near the main gate of the government postgraduate science college. The incident occurred as leaders and workers from the student's wing of Islamist party Jamiat Ulema Islam had gathered for their convention. There was no immediate claim of responsibility. And at 9 o'clock at 40 minutes, when the program was ending, after the dispersal was going, the guests were going, there was a blast here, an ID blast. और अभी तक जो है हमारी जो टीमें हैं वहाँ पे काम कर रही हैं जगह को सिक्योर किया हुआ है और जो हमारी बीडी की टीमें और जो बाकी हमारे इन्वेस्टिगेटर्स हैं सारे वहाँ पे पहुँचे हुए हैं और अभी तक की तलाश यही है कोई एक डेट के जी का ये आईडी थी और ये खंबे के नीचे रखी गई थी और उसमें ब्लास्ट हुआ हुआ है और अभी तक जो हमारे पास इन्फॉर्मेशन है अराउंड फिफ्टीन के करीब हमारे पास जख्मियों की तला है और चार अभी तक शहीद हुए हैं बलोचिस्तान प्रोविंस ऑफ विच क्वेटा इज द कैपिटल has long been the scene of a low-level insurgency by local nationalists. The province is home to the newly expanded Gwadar deep water port that is a key to the planned US$65 billion US dollar investment in China's Belt and Road Initiative Economic Corridor. Life for Afghanistan's poor has always been hard, but it is getting worse amid the Taliban rule, while money has run dry in absence of foreign aid. The United Nations estimates nearly 23 million Afghans are facing extreme levels of hunger, with nearly 9 million at risk of famine as winter takes hold. As winter sets in, Razia, a 35-year-old mother of five who collects leaves and branches in the autumn to heat her home in a cave in Afghanistan's central Bamiyan province, is worried about how to survive the freezing temperatures this year with scarce food. Stories like Razia's are increasingly common in a country struck by severe drought and where money has run dry post the Taliban takeover and in absence of foreign aid. The United Nations estimates nearly 23 million Afghans, about 55% of the population, are facing extreme levels of hunger with nearly 9 million at risk of famine as winter takes hold. Zimistan, Hamisham, and Parakim, Zimistu Behej near Korbor. 
از اون پیش بازم غالی متر بودیم دیمیست تو کارت نیا. Life for Afghanistan's poor has always been hard, but it is getting worse. In winter, Bamiyan province is bitterly cold, with temperatures that can drop below freezing and biting winds. Work slows in the cold months, but the region was already suffering while the Taliban offensive reached its climax. مردم کوربار نداره کلش کسایی که ماش داشتن وظیفه داشتن کلش از دست داده یه کوربار نیست نه نوا بالاست طالبان افیشل سی دی ار اویر اف دی پرابلمز فیسینگ دی پور وچ دی سی استم پارٹلی فرام دی افیکٹس اف مور دن 4 دیکیڈز اف کانفلیکٹ اینڈ مس مینجمنٹ انڈر دی پریویس گورنمنٹ دی ہیو آلسو ریپیٹڈلی کالڈ اون دی یونائٹڈ اسٹیٹس ٹو ان بلاک اراؤنڈ 9 بلین ڈالرز ان سنٹرل بینک ایسیٹس The traditional winter dress pheran has retained its charm among the people since ages in India's Jammu and Kashmir as it scores over the modern winter costumes due to its warmth and comfort to beat the chill. Worn by both men and women as an overcoat, pheran is also regarded as cultural identity of Kashmir. Every year around this time, the demand for pheran, the traditional Kashmiri winter wear, rises in India's Jammu and Kashmir. These loose-feated gowns are worn by both men and women in the Kashmir Valley amid the winter season. The local shopkeeper said even the younger generation is fond of wearing these long coats which are now tailored in latest different trendy designs. कभी कभार यहाँ पे बाहर बाहर के भी लोग आते हैं वो भी लेते हैं यहाँ से ये फैरन क्योंकि इसमें ज़्यादा ये कपड़े नहीं पहनते और यहाँ पे इस फैरन के वजह से ये ज़्यादा हीट भी होता है ये वो वो वाला फैरन नहीं है जो मतलब पहले आता था बड़ा वाला वो वो कांगड़ी वाला फैरन ये आजकल बनाया हमें कोट टाइप पे या ऑफिस में भी चलता है दुकानों में भी चलता है रास्तों में भी चलते हैं मतलब इसमें दो जेब होते हैं आगे तो कोट के टाइप से होता है Despite tremendous change in culture and lifestyle, the Kashmiri Feran hasn't lost its resonance with or relevance to the people to beat the chill. The garment is so popular among the Kashmiris that it has become synonymous with their identity across the globe. Kite flying has been a regional event in India's western Gujarat state for several years. Kite sellers in Surat city are expecting good sales as the footfall of customers has increased ahead of the state's popular kite festival, Uttarayan, held annually in January. The kite sellers in Surat city of India's western Gujarat state are expecting good sales ahead of the annual Uttarayan or kite festival as demand for different designs of colorful kites with messages has increased in the market. According to sellers, the business faced a 50% loss last time due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But looking at the footfall of customers this year, they expect good income now. Prices of kites have also surged as cost of raw materials has risen. बाव में 15-20 टका कच्चे धागे पे बढ़ गया है सब और वो जो पतंग में भी सब कमांड है दाव जो लकड़ी आती है काग कागज आता है उसका भी भाव बढ़ गया है. उसके लिए अगले साल के मुकाबले इस साल बहुत ज्यादा है सबका। उत्तरायन मार्क्स द डेज ऑफ़ द हिंदू कैलेंडर व्हेन विंटर्स बिगेन टर्निंग टू समर्स। द सिंबलिज्म ऑफ़ द काइट फेस्टिवल इस टू शो द अवेकनिंग ऑफ़ द गॉड्स फ्रॉम देयर डीप स्लीप। सेवरल इंटरनेशनल लेवल काइट फ्लाइंग फेस्ट well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and a happy new year. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.